everyone. I'm Dr. Veena Zulu, Assistant Professor in Physics Department, School of Basic Sciences and Research, Sharda University. I'm extremely thankful to the American Association for the Advancement of Science for giving us this opportunity to host this session on the topic, how to ensure participation of the differently able in natural science education and research. And we also thank AVEX for covering us. I'm thankful to everyone present here for this session on a topic which is often neglected in our conversations and usual discussions. So here we are to take up this topic because I believe that there cannot be a better platform than AAAS, which is working for the advancement of science since last 172 years with more than 120,000 act active members. So uh, here we are to start this workshop session. And the speakers of the sessions will be, I am Dr. Venus Delu, who is here for the introductory remarks. Then we have Ms. Harmeet Kaur, who will be sharing her first-hand experience. Then Professor Ravindra Kumar Sinha, who will be discussing the technological aspect, which can help us to ensure the participations of, participation of differently able. Then we have Dr. Raghunath Bhattacharya. He will be discussing the gender perspective that women and uh, other candidates uh, fee feel and face in this uh, scenario. And then we have Mr. Bhagirath Kumar Ladev, who will be speaking on artificial intelligence for differently able. And the, at, at the end, we will be having a, a question and answer session or closing remark for this particular session. So <clears throat> if we can believe the World Bank uh, statistics, then 1 billion people or 15% of the world's population exper experience some or the other form of the disability. So uh, let us pause here, stop for a moment and uh, see what do we understand by disability. So disability is the umbrella term for impairments, activity limitation, and participation restriction referring to negative aspect of the interaction between an individual having health condition with his or her environment. So basically, we understand by the definition of disability that there is participation restriction or maybe activity limitation or impairment, which leads to lack of interaction amongst the uh, of, of a disabled person with the society. So uh, social and uh, physical barrier, researchers have come up with social and physical barrier due to which they say that a person is being uh, is being seen as uh, uh, is, is considered as a person who is unable to interact with the people. So we have to work upon this particular thing. So uh, this is where this is where we, we need to we need to work on. Just give me a minute. So uh, it is better to go for differently. We, we should go for a term which is differently able. Uh, because dif disabled person are often described as differently able to acknowledge that the notion of disability is often limited to physical limitation. It is the physical limitation, basically, uh, that, that they are unable to interact with the people around. And it is not exactly the, uh, the situation that they are feeling, but, but we can say that the, the limitation to physical interaction is what is termed as disability, and we should better use the term differently able in that case. United Nations Convention of the Rights of Person with Disability acknowledges that Disability is an evolving concept, but it, they also st stress on this, that disability results from the interaction between the person impairments and attitudinal and environmental barriers that hinder their full and effective participation in the society on equal basis with others. So basically, if we can improve the interaction, or if we can ensure their full and effective participation, then we can overcome this challenge. So the aim of this particular workshop session is that how can we ensure the participation of differently abled in natural science education and research? And the main motivation behind choosing this topic is the very uh, the data that we get, which is very weak, and we can say that which is very poor. So if we can believe this uh, from uh, the article which was published on 21st November 2019 uh, in this uh, reputed magazine India Today, we, we see that out of 12 million people 
who are differently abled only 1% of the students attend a school this is uh, with respect to the data that we have from india so the situation can be different in the developed countries but if we see the data or the statistics in the developing country we realize that it is very weak the, the people who are differently able are often neglected and don't get that much of education so from this statistics itself we can see that there is only 1% of the population which gets educated and around 63% of them are still unemployed those who who are disabled but uh, educated out of them also only 63% are uh, are unemployed and another motivation is right human rights provide them also equal opportunity they provide them that they should have equal opportunity to pursue education career in science and they are equally capable to opt for science as their career and another thing is negligence i would repeat that again that the situation in the developed countries will be definitely different but we as we hail from developing country we realize that they are often neglected so differently abled are often neglected by the society then what are the strengths on which we can work to bring them to the equal platform as we are on and to to make them uh, interact and to uh, empower them so that they can fully and effectively participate so their strengths are concentration they can concentrate very nicely their senses if some of the senses are weak their other senses are pretty strong they Uh, they don't get distracted easily lack of distraction is there I, i'm sure you all can uh, uh, can appreciate these strengths which are there in them and you you all may acknowledge that also imagination and creativity the creativity and imagination are also their strength then understanding and a strong will power is something if we can work on their strength and we empower them with certain things which we are i am going to discuss in the next few minutes then we will realize that we can overcome the challenges that they are facing so uh, what are the needs for the services where are the where are the needs where we can work on so so we have health services welfare services financial support counseling for parent or family assistive device aids that we can make for them medical rehabilitation counsel for di disabled person educational services vocational tra training and traditional healer so uh, what are their support system their support system can be divided into two or maybe many more i have just taken up two aspects over here so one aspect is social aspect and another aspect is a technological aspect so in case of a social aspect we have friends parents mentors and teachers they can work on them and then technology and artificial intelligence can help them and the infrastructure so if we can work on these uh, different aspect i am sure we will be able to help them to participate in taking up science as their career so how can we empower and what what do we have to work on so we have to customize the technology according to the need of the disabled so this is a very important uh, step over here we need to customize the technology according to the need of that disabled person then we have to even make it affordable it should reach out to people and we have to advertise it as well if we don't advertise it if we don't bring it to the information of all the people then then uh, we cannot uh, we cannot uh, realize the success of that particular technology so uh, this is how we can empower them and then <clears throat> uh one of my speaker will also talk about this startup so we have to educate the differently able and especially if we do that in uh in in science and education science and research so what will happen they will be empowered so much that they can start they can do startups they can open their own startups which is going to help differently able only we have to educate them so much so that according the, to their own needs because they need uh, they know their needs better than us so according the, to their own needs they can actually uh, make some devices or make make uh, make new new uh, technologies which will help them and the people who are like them so we have to uh, work in such a fashion so that we have to bring them to a level where they can start their own startups and for that definitely they need funding philanthropy and ngos and government has to uh, uh, has to step in in that so uh, there are many inspiring stories and stem uh, 
career is for everyone and i'll just show you picture of pictures of few scientists who have actually taken a stem as their career and they are well known and they are they are actually doing very well so uh, we all are aware of stephen hawk and everybody knows him so he had this uh, sclerosis a motor neuron a problem but but he has overcome that and he has worked really hard and we all know him very well so he also has taken up science as a career despite of uh, being differently able then we have astronomer wanda uh, diaz must she has visual dis dis visual impairment but still uh, she has developed a software which helps us listening to space she can uh, she can uh, do the astronomical data with sound so she has developed her own software so education has brought a change in her life then we have this uh, entomologist whose name is richard mankin he is having a rare muscle disorder but he uh, he goes out in the field every day and uh, the kind kind of uh, uh, assistive technology he has he can make out that what are the uh, pests that are there in the uh, in in a particular kind of a crop so he he does that then we have another uh, another biologist whose name is naomi and she works in university of Cal california and uh, she has a inflammatory bowel disease but still she has taken up science as a career and she measures the level of testosterone in blood sample and then we have another environmentalist protecting river uh, rivers so uh, so we have a list of people who despite of being disabled they have despite of having some form of the disability they have taken up science as their a uh, career option and they have worked hard and and we have to uh, we have to work on this and we have to ensure that more people are participating and you have seen that most of the data that i have shown you is of the developed country and we have to uh, work for developing countries as well so uh, they need continuous encouragement so all the people who are differently able they need continuous uh, uh, continuous arrangement uh, encouragement so here i'll introduce i'll take this opportunity to uh, to introduce the speaker of this session so we have first uh, we have miss harmeet kaur she is a science teacher and coordinator with children with a special need she holds msc degree in botany and also ma she has done ma in education and has earned a diploma also in counseling with the mentally retarded people then we have professor sinha he is fellow of spie He is former director of uh, CSIO, which is Central Scientific Instrument Organization. He was director there from July two thousand fifteen to February two thousand twenty, and presently he is a uh, a professor in Department of Applied Physics, Delhi Technological University, India. Then our third speaker will be Dr. R. Bhattacharya. He is presently advisor DST, which is Department of Science and Technology, uh, IIEST, PV Hub, Shibpur, Havra. and he was formerly scientist and emeritus scientist with npl national physical laboratory india then we have mr bhagirath kumar ladev who will be speaking on artificial intelligence for differently able he is presently chief manager uh, with a uh, gale he received his btech from iit delhi and uh, his uh, masters in uh, business administration uh, from iim so uh, these are the list of the speaker and here i am uh, your moderator for the for the session and i think uh, if you have any queries or if you have any suggestion we will welcome all those suggestion you can write your queries on the chat box uh, so i think with this session we will have a message that how to ensure the participation and with that i invite our first speaker uh, ms harmeet kaur ms harmeet kaur please so uh, greetings for the day and i am harmeet and as venus already introduced me that i am a science teacher in a school delhi india for past 18 years and my own niece gungun uh, who is severely mentally retarded she has inspired me to be with these kind of being like um, i i always found a lot of love laughter you know real life and aliveness in, in her space so that inspired me to be the part of this work so uh, thereafter i did diploma in vocational rehabilitation for mentally retarded and i am uh, having 
a license for being a special educator by uh, rehabilitation council of india so uh, first of all uh, so i'm on a uh, gallery view and i'm looking at all of you and i am just uh, looking at your names can i request you to please switch on your video for a minute so that i can really connect with you if you uh, so thank you so much so so first of all i really really want to thank you uh, all of you to provide your listening and and you know uh, taking stand for the humanity so thank you for being here uh, so uh, let's start with my presentation give me a second to uh, share my screen so this is uh, what uh, we are going to uh, speak about as a team how to ensure the participation of differently able in natural science education and research uh so these are the outline uh, the content i am covering the aim the uh, some of the stats i am sharing with you and then uh, the challenges the how to overcome the challenges with few names uh, of the scientists with disability and the government policies what is the aim i am covering to highlight and address the challenges faced by differently able students scholars and researchers and address the timely need for the differently able population in specific area of concern so my first question is why it is important to address this agenda uh, so i'm talking about india so as per the census of 2011 2016 updated the the india population is 121 crore and out of this 2.68 crore people are disabled so which makes 2.21% of the total population i mean when i'm saying this 2.68 crore that is a huge number and many of them can be engaged in natural sciences and research and uh, most of the population in india resides in the rural areas and uh, the rural areas people they are mostly illiterate people uh uh look at the pie chart so here i want to show you the type of the disability when i'm talking about the differently abled i'm including all of them like uh the main percentages of 19% 19% uh, vision impairment and then hearing impairment and 20% with physical uh, disability so what are the objectives i am addressing today the psychological consideration the social out outreach and awareness and awareness i am going to speak about the teachers awareness and the parents awareness then i will uh, give you a glimpse of some of the government policies okay so as stated in the aim uh, i'm going to cover the two parts first i'm going to address the challenges these people are facing and then how to address these challenges and i can speak about the challenges but how to address these challenges we need to think together let's look at so i have categorized these challenges so first is the psychological challenges uh, when i say psychological here i mean uh, here i mean is the thinking of a person that how the person thinks and if you see in the reality the most of the majority of our problem they are not in the physical space they are our mental blockages and um, uh, i give you an uh, instance or example the people stereotype the people with disability that they have a poor quality of life or sometimes they think that they are not healthy one because of their impairment and then there is a stigma that they have done something wrong in their life or maybe in the past life that is why they are getting the, this kind of punishment and as i already stated that uh, we have our population in the rural areas in the villages where the people are superstitious they say they assume that they are possessed by some evil spirits and then uh, they take them uh, to some uh, course of cure and which is no less than a torture as uh, i told you they are illiterate so they are not knowing what is the disability they are dealing with now coming to the social challenges social challenges the social exclusion and the negative attitude 
it results in the social discrimination as i told you i am a school teacher and when i enter into a class of 50 where one people one person or two person with a physical disability or a uh, autistic child so automatically the people discriminate the child so either they are being bullied by or teased by their uh, uh, peer group or they become the source of sympathy as if uh, as if something is wrong in them is like but then actually they are discriminated from the peer group they are isolated and as a result they have few friends maybe one or two or they have no friends if i talk about the teachers the uh, being a teacher or when i uh, hear my fellow teachers they take it as a extra responsibility like uh, uh, sometimes they find them as a source of disturbance in the class and uh, sometimes they feel like ki, uh, they complain that their course is being delayed they're not able to complete their curriculum so finally they ignore these kind of children financial resources there is a lack of financial resources uh, that is a main challenge in inclusion uh, in inclusion and even the parents also think why we input our money when there is no output why we invest in such children so that is the thinking now coming to the infrastructure challenges so when i talk about the infrastructure challenges in uh, as i'm talking uh, from my experience i have seen a very very less buildings that have mandatory stuff for them they are including them but uh, when i say the inclusion uh, i see even in the school even in the colleges they have in uh, if the if they want to go to staff room or if they want to visit some administrative room or the school garden so whatever we are making we include them like they uh, they have the access of everything and more important thing is there is a adequate circulation space here by i mean if a person is uh, is on a wheelchair or if he is uh, Uh, walking with a walking aid or a walking stick so there must be enough space to roam about so and one more thing i want to add on when when you are making a building for the college building or a uh, you are making a lab or making a school building so we need to have some kind of therapy room therapy rooms uh, these children might get exhausted physically or they might get exhausted mentally so they need to have some therapy room as a mandatory room uh, next i am coming to the what are the challenges the teachers face so in our system uh, for becoming a teacher i have to go to go through some kind of training so as i told you i am a science teacher so being a science teacher i am trained to teach physical sciences and life sciences and then there is another category where we train our teacher to teach Uh, special children so they are known as special educator but then the blending of two is not there like a science teacher is not able to handle the uh, children with special needs and the special educator is not able to teach science so that is a that is an area of concern uh, the textbook we follow the same textbook for everyone so there are no separate material or separate plan Uh, a teaching plan or uh, uh, some separate uh, books for them so these resources are not available that is also a concern area so th uh, these are the challenges and one more challenge i want to uh, state their disability their disability is itself a thing that they are dealing with like uh, if i say a person is a blind or a deaf so he is dealing with some kind of uh, some kind of ina inadequacy so that is also a real challenge for them now the the important topic how to overcome these challenges as i already state that i am going to talk about the two categories about the teachers awareness and about the parents awareness because they are the key factor in the development of their child 
first i have stated observe diverse learners so in my class if i am having a class of 50 then the people uh, there are students of different different categories maybe some of them are one or two with the learning disability physical disability or uh, another kind so the teacher needs to be trained to observe the diverse learners they are able to tackle them or they are able to cater their their needs simultaneously very important thing i think every teacher should know about the types of disabilities like we have a, a psychology as a subject we have a, a philosophy as a subject then we study about the indian education system so i think this is a mandatory subject for all the teachers and they should know how they are influence the learning process of a child now i'm talking about a very important thing how to develop empathy and patience like in dealing with both students with disability and their parents so i'm uh, sharing something from my life like uh, i got married at the age of 20 and at the age of 21 i have a baby in my lap and i had no training for being a mother and just out of my compassion and out of my love and out out of my unconditional stand for my child i really learned how, how to take care of my child and the same thing i am expecting from the teachers the teachers to have such kind of uh, such kind of unconditional stand so that we don't have to give them the strategies because uh, uh, in reality we can't uh, give them the strategy strategies to deal with the individual need of the child so that is there so how to bring that on the real ground on the practical ground that is the question for you okay so next is the planning and teaching in order to meet the demands of the students with in intellectual disability so they are able to uh, make the individual plans uh, as i stated so they are aware of their needs and they can uh, fulfill on their needs so this is what i want to state uh, i can uh, i'm showing the stages how one can add a new knowledge like the science concept to the already stored one so i've uh, shown the five uh, steps engage first you need to engage a child into some kind of question some kind of query so uh, so that uh, he can have some idea uh, or understanding then let him explore it in the sense uh, uh, he can be engaged into some kind of activity some kind of uh, experiment so that he may know that his idea and understanding is like logical then he is able to explain that Uh, the teacher doesn't need to explain at this point of time because he has already with uh, already drawn some kind of conclusion then he can elaborate that that means uh, the concept he has understood or he concluded out can be put into the practical use in other areas he can evaluate himself uh, in in uh, this term uh, the teacher also can have the assessment of the child that how much knowledge he has gained and what are his strength area and then take the child to the science stream so uh, this is a slide where i'm showing if the teachers they are able to uh, make some kits or some kind of material or some kind of uh, printed material and uh, some plans they would be helpful for them to educate such children uh, coming to the parents awareness so as a parent so the parents play a very very important role in the life of a child the parent voice is the voice of a child in his head like as a parent what i say to my child he understand that he believe that he trust that and he go by it so uh, here i want to uh, give a story like a one minute story i need to see the time also minus can you uh, state what yeah, how much time yeah it's so almost uh, time so you can just conclude and yeah 10 minutes so yeah Uh, two three minutes i am going to take so i i want to uh, tell tell you one story so there were two boys they were playing around a well right so one of the boy uh, he was just a 8 9 years boy and then one of the boy fell into the well and the other boy uh, uh, found some rope and take him out of the well 
and when they go back home they um, speak about this experience to the villagers and the villagers they didn't believe them how can you do that so so how the child did that did that because there was there was uh, at that time no one was there to tell him that you can't do it you are not capable no one was there so that is why he did it so as a parent you need to understand the learning disability is not insurmountable it is not that you can't deal with it it's like uh, it's like uh, there are two children one with normal eyesight and the other one with uh, you know uh, with some uh, low vision and what what i do i give him a specs so now the two children they have the normal vision they are at the same level so this is what i think about these differently able people that what is missing provide them and then they will do what is what they are you know what they are capable of now become your own expert uh, as a parent it is like your uh, duty to know what therapies are available around or what kind of technologies are available for your child sometimes you really have to stand up for your child against the society with the society and sometimes you have to demand from the society like accept my child and work on my child remember that your influence outweighs all others so i'm just i'm showing you some um, a slide of some scientist like we think that we have a notion that if somebody is with disability then if there if his survival is being handled that is more than enough but then there are scientists who took their call like who really took their call to uh, fulfill the purpose of their life and leave a planet a better place so these are the scientists albert einstein everybody knows thomas edison john forbes nash he was a, a nobel prize winner so uh, looking at the time i'm just moving it on so i why i stated uh, the name of these scientists because when we can think that these people they will take on research they will take on science trust me they can invent something for themselves like something which is really really helpful for for you know covering up the disability uh, i am showing you the national policy the government policy so the it states that they are the human resource and if we are going to take care of them in a proper way we uh, they can really show up as a great human being and when i have gone through this policy like uh, i've gone through this policy in detail and when i've gone through this policy i saw that this is like a very beautiful policy which can provide each and everything to these children or these people and but when i see in actual ground something is missing there there is a gap so what what is the gap of like uh, the uh, the rules are there the policies are there and on the ground level they are not getting what, what they should get so that is again a question mark uh finally i am concluding out the only true disability is inability to, to accept the difference so uh, what i am uh, i want to stress upon can we have the society where we really uh, shower our love our compassion to each and every one we meet and we are able to connect with our own humanity i think uh, this is the only solution for uh, these things so thank you so much over to you winners yeah thank you so much ms kaur it was a wonderful presentation and as we move forward i request professor rk sinha to present his make his presentation professor sinha okay so i have made it in the slide so yes, first sir. of all it is my great pleasure that this type of workshop is being organized by 160 plus years organization called the american association for advancement of science and this is the requirement for the whole world 
and we are happy that we from India are also participating on this issue. Since my introduction has already been given, I am a basically a teacher served at a different role, which has already been explained. But what I look that technology is a great enabler. I mean, you can solve any problem of the world with the aid of the technology. Some people say, no, it is not good, but I have seen many of the problems are being solved by the technology. The human quest of using this science to develop a technological product and helping the mankind. So uh, that is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics for differently abled is also true. Dr. Venus and Harmit Kaur, they have given a wide presentations about the need of assistive technologies and a large number of the populations, say around, as it was given, around 2.5% populations are, uh, I mean, differently able or physically challenged. So we need to develop a technology. We need to develop, use our scientific knowledge is to develop a technology to so that these population, which is a large number of a population, they can get equal benefits by a studying science as well as doing a research at a higher level. So my objective is here is that these technologies should be developed also fast unless we put a concentrated effort it is not a job of the one country or one particular lab should do at a world level there should be collaborations and the interaction among the scientists and technologies who are developing a assistive technology for the differently able people so uh, technology is a great enabler and it is extremely difficult uh, for the differently people, people. We know that, as Harmit Kaur has pointed out, that in school and college, some of the children who are differently able, they themselves get side away and their growth is not there. It is not that they do not have a determination. They have a high level of a determination, but certain additional, even a minute help can make them much better than even in the their counterpart pupil. So with that view, my effort is there, how to develop a technology? What is the intervention of the government? So I will just describe about the organization which I have worked that is comes under in India's premier research organizations working in all development. I mean, all fields of the human endeavor called the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research. It was established prior to India got independence. And then there are 38 laboratories. They are working for all aspects of the human life and it's a group of the scientists, say 4,000 plus scientists are there, many research students, and they have truly helped the country to become a food sufficient and to how to do a fair means of electioning, how to provide the baby milk powder when the India was suffering a problem or a scarcity of that. So now this is a time that these labs these scientific organizations should work for providing a solutions for a differently able children so that they should become a conscious citizen, they should become the as good citizen as the normal human being, and we should use them for uh, taking their own life to lead in a much better way. So that is how I will describe the lab in which I have worked that is called Central Scientific Instruments organization located in a northern part of our country. It's a beautiful city called Chandigarh city. This is one of the well-planned city. So this lab has a certain, we work in almost all technological domain. 
agriculture, healthcare, defense, public safety. Since I have led this organization, I tried to put the scientists in a one particular domain too, so that their technology should be helpful for differently able persons. They are visually challenged or locomotive challenged and providing them assistive technology. So that was one of the area. So I put an effort and there was a result and still the people are working on that. What I want that at a world level, there should be an organization, they should help each other, scientific organization to design, develop a, a equipment and instruments to empower the differently able people. So some of these technologies, which I will be demonstrating is a, there for reading machine for visually challenged persons, particularly we call them a blind, but that is a visually challenged or visually impaired, those whose hands are not working, those whose uh, legs are not working, or those who want to get a freedom to travel. So for them, what kind of a technology should be there? So one of the technology is, which we have put an effort and is called the Divvinayan. It is, an, uh, you can say, a reading machine for those who are visually impaired. I think I will be, without explaining, I will run a video. This is a two minutes video. And I hope the sound and all will be there so you can listen and understand how it works. This is developed in the last two years. And as a scientist, Dr. Venus has presented that the technology should be affordable. So we have put it like that so that the cost should be as low as possible so that it could, should be available to many people. So just time. Inability to read is the greatest obstacle to the education of the visually impaired. Braille is the still main source of reading, but it is a laborious activity. Therefore, assistive technologies for reading various documents and books are required. CSIR, CSIO, Chandigarh has developed the Vinayal, a portable reading machine based on the principle of contact scanning of a printed document and converting into the speech. It has support for reading Hindi and English, which can be configured for other major languages. The device is also capable of reading website content. दृष्टि इन लोगों को प्रकाशित अथवा इलेक्ट्रॉनिक माध्यमों पर उपलब्ध लिखित सामग्री को पढ़ने में सहायता करने के लिए CSIR CSIO ने एक पोर्टेबल रीडिंग मशीन का विकास किया है। इससे पहले भी मैंने और डिवाइस देखे हैं, लाइक देस डेजी प्लेयर्स, ब्लैक टॉप, जॉब्स में कम्युनिकेशन में यूज किया है। yeah, so some last portion was, uh, I mean, the speech was in Hindi. So that was the machine's voice. I mean, we have deliberately, de uh, I mean, worked for that as it was funded by the government of India. So we were concerned that these technologies should be affordable to those who are working in the local languages. So we have now developed at least in 10 languages and it is very well developed in the other uh, Spanish and the English language like that. So this is one of the device so that visually per challenged persons can. Oh. Inability to read is the greatest. Now, another one is the touch control wheelchair. That is you touch it and it will move it. I will just show some video here also. So it will move it like this. I mean, those who are challenged for walking and all. So for them, make them sit down and just by touching their finger, they can maneuver this vehicle. These type of vehicles are available also in some places, but if laboratories like us working in India, our job was there to minimize the cost of this one. So we work mostly on this aspect. 
Now, another one is that which you can run by moving your face also. So that kind of a chair is also there. Of course, it is a bit costlier compared to the previous one. But again, all these are in much more affordable um, price for the Indian market. And therefore, I believe that for the other places, it will be equally good and affordable technology for it to be used by the differently able persons. So this is the one like the way he's turning the face, the vehicle uh, runs and moves that. So it's a simple technology, even our undergraduate BTEC students can make this kind of a device and technology. Okay, so now just a bit of this, those who are, we have worked on the developing the myoelectric arms, that is who are uh, so how to provide them a writing capability as well as a lifting so that they can do their own job. So, And similarly, the knee. I here I must say that India has a in the city called uh, Jaipur. There is they make a foot artificial foot and the leg much more lowest cost. There are uh, many case studies in what way we have developed this. So many people come, many poorer section people come and get their um, foot implanted there. And it is working well, less than, a, I mean, you can $60 or $70. And similarly, my Divinion machine is also costing less than $100. Otherwise, its price would have been much more higher. So my point of saying is that Technology is a great enabler and government or the mankind should work con in concentrated way to develop these technologies and make them affordable rather than give it freely, make it freely available to the differently able persons so that they can discharge their learning capabilities and they should come into the mainframe, do not feel like that they are deprived for such abilities. So that is what is my conclusion, that technology is a great enabler to bring the differently able people into the lim limelight. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Professor Sina, for a wonderful presentation. And uh, we hope and we request that researchers continue to uh, to, to provide for the need of differently abled and uh, it was your statement only that we need to work on customizing according to yeah. the demand of the uh, of the differently able people. So we just hope that by this platform we can request all the researchers who are there in the world to work on this. Thank you so much, Professor Sena. And Thank with you. this, we move forward and we invite uh, Dr. Bhattacharya to make his presentation. Dr. Bhattacharya. Uh, thank you uh, for this opportunity. And my previous speakers, uh, Venus and Armit and Professor Sinas, my, made my job very easy. And I again, uh, like Professor Sinha, all my life I worked for CSIR and the laboratory, which is known as National Physical Laboratory, and it is in Delhi. And I was there for more than 35 years, and I returned here as emeritus scientist. Now, these are my say uh, presentation is a loosely couple. I'll tell you about a couple of uh, anecdotes where I had to, we could meet uh, Professor Stephen Hawking when we came to NPL, and a lady uh, which inspired me a lot. Then the general problem of ladies, uh, because I'm focusing on girls and ladies and their problem in science and, uh, and then some recommendation and conclusion. Now, this is one of the most important slide that change of mindset is most required because in our curricula as what we have, uh, Armit has said and everybody said, it needs to be designed for differently able and which has not been done. So unless we do it, special needs of different level will be failing. Now, what my NPL days, as I said, and uh, Venus has touched it, 
Now, he is the most well-known and celebrated differentially able scientist and philosopher. Now, see, but one thing to note here that he, till 21, he was all right. So his formal education he has completed, that is very important. And more than unimportant, that he is a lived a richer and fuller life, he is unmarried and children. You will soon feel many a girls and women who are handicapped are not always able to marry and have a family. Now, when he came to uh, India, he was uh, invited in many places and he went to TFR. Then this Mahindra and Mahindra is a very well known to, uh, say, automobile manufacturer. They designed a particular vehicle for his movement in Bombay. And his 59th birthday, he was here in Bombay. And he gave a talk predicting the future from astrology and back holes. Now, why black holes are important, you know, this year's novel was given uh, something related to that. So then he came to Delhi, and now this is our president who was receiving it at Narayan. And then he, there was an article where he says Indians are so good in mathematics and physics. It is <laughs> Stephen Hawking's. And you will see this year, when uh, say Nobel was given to Sir Roger Penrose, now he has acknowledged two Indian scientists whose work he has referred, A.K. Rai Choudhury and Sivin Vishwa. So we have this, and this has been there for long. Now, during my NPL days, uh, we had a large number of hearing and speech disabled in our pilot plant. And what is good here, that many of our scientists and uh, say students, they learned the language to converse with them and also, you say, had jokes. Now, there was a very senior scientist who could not move his bent. We have to always look. Uh, so, and then, but there are two uh, junior scientists. One was a woman, another was a man who was a middle heir. The man had a family and they could drive a three-wheel scooter. Now, they were but in science administration, not active scientists. Now, Hermit has said that this is uh, how uh, the 1911 uh, census, 15 to 19 years, who never attended his school is 27 percent, and then attended his school. So, but most important is this slide you see. 89 percent they can go to the school. But only, you see, if you see, the 12, they finish is very small number, about 2% in high school. Now, out of that, how many are girls and how many will come to science? That's a very important question. So, the percent of visually taking careers in commerce are more. Now, this is an easy choice. But it is important course, science makes you think, it gives you courage to challenge the status quo. So science is now in uh, Indian languages, uh, women and girls are known. One is Abala, that she has no strength. But other is Mahila, who has element of greatness. And other is Nari, who inspires. So these are all three there. Now, why I chose this topic? that this is the year which is the theme is National Science Day for Women in Science. So this inspired me to limit my say, uh, discussion to this. Now this lady, the Scottish lady, she was the one for whom this word scientist was coined. Earlier with man in science they were telling, but this woman, she was a, say, wrote a book and she was a, say, so this is, uh, I think I recommend this book to, and she had four children, she raised those children. So this is a very inspiring study. Uh, uh, now this is, you say, this year's Nobel Prize. Now what is, you see, if I read carefully, uh, they said that they innate differences in male and female minds. It was said by none other than, you see, Harvard University economist that this, is, this was the boys. 
Now they say that they face many, many, you see, uh, so difficulties in their science career. So, but then they overcome, and these are again very inspiring. They share uh, Nobel Prize in Chemistry. Now. There are different, uh, see, uh, I won't go, but most of, you see, so one study found that 60 or 1 percent go for progenitors and only 15 percent are suppressor. And they complaining this is harder to gain uh, venture capital for them. Now, UNESCO also uh, says that there is a mindset that uh, often women's view of their own capabilities and achievements. Now, again, uh, see, uh, injuring also these days, uh, see, girls are going for. So, men, see, they, the main problem is combining work with family life. Now, this is one. So, now this is again uh, one very important uh, Somaya Vishwanathan, uh, Swaminathan, she is the WHO, uh, say, uh, chief had faced many kinds of challenges. It wasn't easy to be heard as a young researcher. She has often talked down or had her ideas dismissed. Dr. Swaminathan says, you know, uh, such a... Now, this is very important as everybody is saying that parental, you see, uh, you see uh, her father was a very well-known person uh, uh, who was the an agriculture scientist and he is given credit for bringing a green revolution in the country. It was perhaps that is very unusual, she says. I never felt treated differently as a woman or girl because she was a, such a uh, daughter of a, such a prominent person. She was treated well in school. It was only after I started my career in government research institution that I experienced the culture of male-dominated uh, committee room. That's even when you felt you were being talked down to a male, they made fun of it. Now, so you see, now, India needs women scientists, but women won't allow it. This is the some in quantum leap. Now, but only a few of them make it to the national laboratories, universities, and 30% of all PhD sciences are open, but only 15% get the faculty position. Now, this is what everybody says, a leaking pipe. Now, again, a welcome trust and DBT, it is the government of our uh, uh, Department of uh, uh, Biotechnology. Now, a researcher from Indian Institute of Science is the premier institute in India. She says she was in tears while explaining how her male seniors were denying her. So, these are, there are many things. So, there is one competition laboratory in CSR, biologists, women's science are yet to develop, a, a, you say, sitting in an independent lab within a day, don't get. So, there are, you know, what is the way ahead? That is important. Enhanced lay limit for women scientists is uh, 35, and that is the time when they set up families. Now, this is, uh, say, what people recommend. Now, recently I attended a seminar webinar in Neri where this DG uh, CSI made to correct their gender bias. Non-hierarchical institute set up. Women should be encouraged to take up administrative roles. Then only they can bring the challenge. Definitely require early digital education. Uh, everybody is saying, we as a society should mobilize this digital education towards now, they must begin to use computing and networking tools at a young age. If such students are added with assistive technology to overcome their impairment, they can work in areas of their interest. For example, good number of visually impaired students have trained. Now, again, making ecosystem through available assistive technologies, that's what Professor Sinha was also emphasizing is a technology, which is very important. Technology can bridge the gap and bring a new experience and a training to make day-to-day -day education easy. Text-to-speech, speech recognition, visualize, now Braille. Now, 
when designed to be inclusive in formal science learning experience can lead people with disabilities to feel competent and empowered as science learners otherwise they will be alienated now two sets of people visiting a science museum one see has a see positive experience now and other has a negative experience who was deaf because it was not designed for a deaf and dumb it was see that's why we don't design our curricula or things like that according to now this is one 60% of it companies employ person with disability the small companies like memphis makes special effort they are employing a woman with a disability now they say project trains you know and make them industry ready so it is a trend setter now you say about of 200 employees 90% were disabled and of that 90% are women disabled so and productivity or quality of one woman disabled employees has never been an issue so assistive technology assistive technology in any item piece of equipment software program or product system that is used to increase maintain or improve now all in attempt to make life better while there is no dearth of assistive technologies available in india they tend to be expensive and there was csio uh, professor sinha was a director and he in talk emphasized it has to be affordable now the government has accessible india campaign sugamya bharat abhiyan easy to commute now this is now customized career option i strongly believe that unless you they cannot go to all skills they have to customize now microsoft has also developed software that a blind man can use independently and windows have helped visually impaired humans to learn computers and in banks government offices railways so now some indian woman you see she minakshi munshi now she gave a similar talk essence of being women scientist and she is a advisor dbt now another she is an isc good bole women in science now she is in department of biotechnology secretary now earlier she was a well, most of them you see are biology or botanist or biotechnologist now first indian visually challenged iss officer uh, now this is again ira singhal now she is competed and she is a btech in is a computer from netaji subhas delhi and she say and now her father and ma- mother as you say as uh, admit was saying the parental this and she was among the toppers in sophia girls school merit now she has computer engineering and then they said the uh, faculty of management and study university of delhi and she did very well despite now learning all that clearing she was denied to say position posting because of the now ultimately she fought and she got it now she is the brand ambassador of this department of disability now now another i see like i met this lady uh, now while traveling in metro and she was for saksham now this is in uh, new delhi in uh, rajendragar now they have like professor sinha said all sorts of gadget you know they made and then in different languages uh, they have been able to do and screen reading software as you see so this is what is helping now government has also has a providing a special equipment and ugc act for so i i the indian uh, say council of technical education as you see they have also are aware of that and they are uh, making ma- much effort now but they are nagging concern now you see all indian institute of medical sciences this is our premier in medical you see institute in delhi now court of commission of persons with disability they required that your facilities are not 
say disability friendly so this is the i wanted to brought, bring to now i finally come to what are the recommendation making ecosystem through available assistive technologies as all my previous speaker i think is speaker following also will uh, differently able differently able require early digital education customized career option it could be computer science engineering biological science computational biology bioinformatics computational solid state physics and chemistry mathematical study theoretical physics cosmology architecture etc age limit of women scientist has to be enhanced negative attitude that has been said that has to be it is important to maintain commitments parental and family support as mentor changing physical access to buildings already underway there are lifts and braille ramp etc etc lab notebooks need to get more electronic and less physical ways biggest concern is the way which training skills and degree exams are evaluated i said you see that uh, first uh, the cartoon you see visually an auditory uh, auditory impaired candidates find it extremely hard to blossom in audio visual video heavy training scheme this is a major impediment in phd training area and auditory challenge candidates is willfully excluded from being considered as a candidate for phd supervisor due to the challenge the evaluation is skim present now there is a that means there is a glass ceiling for differently able we as emphasizing you see the r&d but you see this unless we uh, realize this what are the uh, concerns and find ways now physiological consideration uh, psychological consideration has been uh, talked about by her may eventually they either leave the lab environment or take drastic career reverses and get relegated to being technicians so they can't be a very scientist india is doubly hard for them since there is no formalized mental health support system in place for mainstream graduate students so obviously the differently able are very much an invisible body it is extremely difficult for differently able candidate who have won government fellowship to follow up on the money it will not be hard for funding bodies to flag the specially able cases and make their helpline or support system separate from mainstream now i can tell when i am daily i get so many you see requests sir can you see so i had to go to this uh, say officer csr and other persons to then why you say so there are problems you know so now let me see we are then that again coming back to stephen hawking's and however difficult life may seem there is always something you can do and succeed at it matters that you don't give up i think that's all i'll as like to say in addition to all that my predecessor earlier earlier speaker has spoken uh, thank you for your attention thank you so much uh, dr bhattacharya for your wonderful presentation especially discussing this important topic of gender biasness uh, mm -hmm. which women do feel and they face and they are talked down and uh, i loved the important part of the i the most important part was the conclusion concluding remark that you have brought forward so those uh, 13 points i'm definitely uh, i i definitely Uh, acknowledge them and uh, i think the yeah, organizations are working that's why i brought it in one place so that yeah. in your report writing you can use it yeah thank you so much sir so now uh, i invite i invite mr ladev to come forward and make his presentation mr ladev i am bhagirath and uh, i also have some kind of uh, Uh, disability uh, it is not much but there is some so i wanted to share my experience uh, while doing my engineering and uh, then i have uh, some thought on how ai can help uh, in 
uh, educating the disabled people. So first of all, I would like to say that uh, this opinion which I'm expressing are my own and uh, they are not reflecting any of uh, opinion for my employer or any other organization being talked about. So first of all is my journey. So I did my bachelor's in technology. So that requires a shop floor workshop in the first year of education. So these are some of the workshops which I did and one of them was uh, blacksmithy, carpentry, foundry, machine shop, welding shop, sheet metal shop. So what I learned in these was that some of these workshops were quite difficult. And uh, what actually was needed was, you know, that uh, I needed help of some or other friend. So all my classmates, uh, they were very much uh, helpful and I was able to get their attention as well as time. But what I feel is that uh, there should be a formal mechanism to help such students. So there was no formal mechanism and it was a will of the, first of all, the lab in charge and second of the classmates who have to make their own jobs and then help me also. And some of the jobs were quite difficult. For example, this foundry, it was, you know, very heavy lifting thing was required, which was very difficult for me to do. And I definitely needed somebody's help. So I feel in college education and especially in engineering education, we need to have uh, some or other mechanism, formal mechanism for helping the uh, differently able people. We have already discussed about great scientists who had some kind of disability and uh, definitely we can learn from their lives. So let us talk about, you know, technology and how AI can help. So we see uh, assistive technology is the area and uh, umbrella term for enabling uh, these people who have some kind of impairment, some kind of disability. So more than 1 billion people need one or more assistive product. And uh, however, only one out of 10 have the access to you know such a thing. So what are the assistive, assistive products? First, we see that hearing aids, wheelchair, communication aids, spectacles, prosthesis, pill organizers, memory aids. So these are some of the technology uh, assistive products which can help the disabled. So where AI comes in this? So AI has many promises uh, now more than uh, 60, 70 years of you know, active research in AI. So we have come to a situation where AI can provide sight to visually impaired. It can provide hearing to, you know, hearing impaired, and it can help in movement to the physically challenged. So these are the promises and we will discuss them in detail. So promise of sight, how can AI provide sight? So there are uh, many, you know, apps which are now available eye sense and uh, seeing AI. Seeing AI is a very good app by Microsoft. So it can tell, it can describe the environment to the visually uh, challenged people. And it can interpret the world and speak to the user. And it can definitely help in education. And it is equipped with wearable camera and uh, it uses AI and computer vision to provide the services that it gives. It can recognize faces, identify objects, read text. So it can provide eyesight in the sense to the people who are visually impaired. Now, what about people who are having hearing problem? So here also AI can help. Microsoft has launched uh, this AI for accessibility uh, drive and a lot of active lot of work is being done by Microsoft and many other partner organizations for helping the people who have some or other kind of disability. So here in AI makes you know deaf person to hear by using the apps. So there are many technologies which can translate multiple languages to English uh, text. So that can be done. Machine learning can convert American sign language to English in real time. 
and it can be done for any other sign language as well. Speech recognition and real-time captioning for conversations uh, during conferencing. So such facilities are available in various conferencing apps. Microsoft has provided this technology. Google can also provide, uh, but this is possibility because of the advances in AI. Now there is a great research going on that GPT-3. So that can do many of these tasks in real time. So AI has a lot of power in enabling hearing for hearing impaired. Now third is movement, uh, providing movement to the physically challenged. So there many of the technologies uh, were there earlier. Many of these technologies can be used for soldiers for that matter, but using them for uh, differently abled is a new uh, thing, new area. And uh, there are this powered uh, exoskeleton. So they are wearable machine, uh, which can help the person with some kind of uh, uh, physical challenge to move. So AI powered robotic uh, exoskeletons have made it easy for people with physical deformities to walk around. Technology is still improving, but possibilities are infinite. And we have a specific technology of AI re reinforcement learning. So that can be used to train these systems for specific individual needs. So for example, if a person has some particular need for a particular kind of activity, so we can uh, train these systems. So such possibilities are now uh, possible using AI. Self-driving car is uh, already like uh, trial has been there and uh, different companies are working and this can act as a great boon for people with disability uh, because self-driving car it can provide mobility to the people and they don't have to drive. The car will drive for wherever they want to go, whether it is school or whether it is work. So this is a great boon. It is going to help the disabled in a great way. And it uses AI technology as well. Like there are many other things which uh, a self-driving car uses, but AI technology is the one which actually gives it much of the power that it needs. We have technologies like smart home. So AI is the key enabler for smart homes and for the people with disability, this can be a great boon. Um, it can provide them independent living and uh, it can also learn from the routine and using voice technology, you can tell many of the simple things like turning light off or on, adjust the heat or air conditioning a uh, turn of the stove and those kind of things to make the people disabled people independent so these technologies are possible using smart homes now ai gives you capability to learn so it can be customized so if a person wants uh, much of the independence so we can provide them using the learning capabilities of ai and that way this ai a smart home can be a great enabler Microsoft has uh, provided many of the technologies uh, which can help uh, people with disability. And one of them is automatic alt text. So whenever you insert any image in any you know presentation or any document, so it gives you an option to automatically understand what is there in the image and it will generate a caption for you. So that is a AI driven technology and it is there mostly for the visually impaired for the accessibility because they cannot see what is there on the screen. So it will read that, for example, this particular image, it may say that two people smiling with sunglasses, sky, outdoor water. So this is AI generated alt text. There are some very good apps. Uh, for example, seeing AI, we already discussed this is a Microsoft app. There is another app called Avaj. It is a fully uh, full featured augmentative and alternative communication app. Then Visual Fi for deaf people in Clove is, you know, you can find friendship and love uh, for differently abled. So this particular app is there and then Gnosis. So this app translates uh, sign language to into text and speech in real time. 
so such many of such apps are available and uh, they can be used to empower uh, people with different kind of disabilities iit delhi where i did my engineering from so it has a lot of work uh, being done in this particular area there is like uh, technologies like drill laptops flexi cl clutches then uh, interactive device for people using white canes mobile application to help those who st stammer so those technologies are available now there is very good technology it is called uh, smart cane and this particular technology can help you to find some obstacle which is above the ground so typically the cane cannot find the normal cane cannot find uh, some obstacle which is above the ground so i'll just uh, play this video a small portion of it i get up like any other person breathe the early morning air strive to always reach on time get off this road and my white cane actually could not detect it because the chassis of the truck is high and my white cane actually went below the chassis and my head actually banged against the body of the truck and obviously it was not the truck but so we can see that you know this particular technology uses some uh, you know technology ultrasonic technology to detect objects now using ai we can you know multi we can multiply many of the capabilities for this particular uh, smart cane and uh, it can have the technologies enabled for vision and for nlp and it can help in wide uh, varieties of uh, uh, physical disabilities now let me go to the next slide uh, so finally there is one thing which youtube had has done so this is sound effects in youtube so now not only can it provide the real time caption it can also provide some sound effects like for example if there is an applause if there is a music if there is a laughter so this is a ai powered technology and uh, ai can detect uh, such things in a particular video so all these technologies can help uh, people as with uh, of different uh, types of disability to help in their education so we right now these technologies are working independently people are not using these technologies specifically for people who are differently able but we can Uh, you know orient our research to an area where these technologies are human uh, centered technologies and for example stanford has a human centered ai uh, institute which they are developing where different kind of researchers come together and they make ai human centered so such things are required and uh, ai is definitely there to help people who are differently able So this is what I wanted to share. Uh, thank you so much, and I give the dais back to Venus, uh, Dr. Venus. Yeah, thank you so much, Mr. Lade, for bringing out such a wonderful presentation, and uh, for uh, telling us that how AI can enable to make uh, dis differently able people independent. And once differently able people are independent, they can reach out to uh, wherever they want, and then they can make their career. uh in into science engineering medical whatever field so with the technology i would like to say the concluding remark that uh, all my speakers who uh, presented their work so we have seen that there had been a psychological a uh, psychological effect so psychological support if we can provide them the psychological support if we can provide them the technology if we can provide artificial intelligence and if we can remove the gender biasness so uh, we'll bring all of them on equal platform and i am sure all the differently people able differently abled people will will uh, be a boon to the society and they are actually and they'll be helping us out in 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 making this world a better place i am sure so uh, moving on to the questions i think most of the questions had uh, already been answered uh, jonathan i think you can 
uh, say on that you can you can give your remark most of the questions have been answered right except uh, for the last two questions there yeah most of them have in in the chat i actually had one if you if you don't mind yeah yeah please and i request all my speakers of the session to unmute yourself so that the remaining 5 minutes we can uh, take the question and whosoever is uh, good enough to answer can answer that yeah please jonathan yeah so this is this is for uh, harmeet and, and and also related to uh, ragunath um in, in your presentation harmeet you you um showed what looked like a pretty big difference uh, between the number of men with disabilities and the number of women and uh, the question arose in my mind about whether that was real or whether uh, the numbers of females with disabilities in india are being underreported uh, and if so how that might relate to some of the challenges the the psychological social and infrastructural uh, that you and uh, Uh, and professor um uh, batatria uh, mentioned so uh, so as far as i know jonathan the i have shown you the number of uh, p- uh, male and female the number is uh, like very with the disability so uh, my idea is the number of population of male and female also very like in the normal population we have more number of males than females Mm. so that is also an agenda like the girl child is like that that is also an, a, an agenda which is different from this different creative this is what i want to say about yeah, it is a big problem you know yeah. additionally i think i'll agree with uh, mr dre that in case of girls you know it is under reporting also you know because in the rural areas especially uh, they are the in senses also they don't come forward and share all this uh, see this may be one reason but on the whole what uh, say by marmit said uh, because the male female ratio is very skewed <laughs> if you go by part to part in the country they are very different you know and unfortunately Uh, see infanticide you know that is still a reality though government has been uh, banned it in many cases but i think is a all sorts of you say diversity in country very highly educated to uh, not educated at all so this disparity and some under reporting may be there yeah so girl infanticide is another issue which we are uh, dealing with which we try to deal with so that is also one problem uh, jonathan and that um so i can i can move on to to the the remaining two questions in the chat um i i, I can read them to you or i mean you can all see them as well which is professor sinha has already answered because angelita has asked that is it easy to establish cooperation between government of india and technological institutions in order to spread technology and make the tools available for everybody so a uh, sir has already answered that yes institutions are open but the thing is that uh, yeah uh, uh, funding is also important in that case sir can you answer that professor sinha no it is one can those who want to take up this technology or further develop it they can directly contact to the director it is the head of that laboratory and head of the laboratory will take all care of that so there is no too much of bureaucracy involved in this kind of a purpose so mr bhagirath can also answer iit delhi director is also very open in that yeah actually we have iit delhi i think conducts uh, such uh, exhibitions also three day four day exhibition where people can come they can see the technology and they can license it i mean it is uh, quite easy uh, i think and it is very open and iit delhi encourages uh, all the people who are willing to work in this area yeah, so many of them have a dedicated uh, website for this yeah and in the actually speaking the cost of acquiring the technology may be also very low if you talk in dollar terms yeah i'll read the last question can members of the pa- sorry sir sorry sir professor sinha hmm what is the question uh, can members of the panel suggest any universal design principles researchers might use to create effective outreach events for differently abled children bill has asked this question 
any universal design principle researchers might use to create effective outreach events or differently able so i yeah. think harmeet you can tell this that maybe uh, we can we can uh, advertise about these and conduct outreach activities with the schools and uh, with the parents can harmeet you answer this you unmute yourself first yeah thank you thank you yes. so uh, so what the so uh, bill is asking what the researchers can use so i'm just thinking so my my idea is like like the transformation of the humanity so so if you uh, ask me what we can do on the ground level like uh, um, like being a teacher i can see that uh, so what is clicking in my mind is like if i uh, celebrate a week like a blind week for the blind where every person uh, you know uh, uh, play a role of a blind and get into the world of that person and then actually see what he is like what he or she is experiencing so uh, that one thing is uh, that uh, something of that sort like what we can yeah, do think, to connect them with the humanity like yeah sorry putting yeah, oneself in other person's show so yeah. that can be one design principle you know like you imagine yourself in the disabled person's position and see how your technology or how your idea can be used by that particular person whether the person is having visual impairment or locomotive impairment so for example you know the way we design apps the way we design uh, you know buildings the way we design software so one design principle can be putting yourself in other person's shoe and you know think how the other person will be able to use this particular product or this particular service yeah i will yeah. just add technology developer also need the feedback from the uh, disabled persons like for example divinan i myself as a director visited blind school several blind schools and saw the got the different perspective from them so that we have modified to a, at a level and in fact we have conducted such kind of a workshop in different parts of the country like in the northern part southern part so that all people should get us give us a feedback we need their feedback also and many a times we have to do a specific customization for the persons i mean developing a technology is not the end how to be used by the different people because they are having a different level of uh, i mean disability so yeah, it is yeah, a yeah. it is a simple thing Just like smartphone uh, video simple thing like yes, smartphone i think hmm. it's not available for visually impaired is that he can use it and i have many requests i won't name the manufacturer one manufacturer they had a product they said sir we withdrew it because it was not in commercial value it was selling so i think in institution blind institution government and all that this is a, and that particular person has acquired many he is well to do and he acquired many thing from different countries with different type of limitations so what the technology it isn't uh, as i say as uh, it is a uh, is a very difficult thing a universal design uh, is so very very difficult uh, social, corporate social uh, so, uh, responsibility you know takes a very important role over here what are the principles you know that a particular organization is following as a corporate citizen so that is also important you yeah. know for bringing such technologies to the people who need to use them so bhagirathi when i want to add something to it like yeah. i have uh, this view to share with you all that that whenever we think of a person we see whether the person is useful or not useful why why we are holding such workshops on differently abled as we think that the human being few human beings are useful and some are not useful as if they are some kind of objects or some kind of project products so so this is my question to all of you how can how what we can do to change this mentality 
and if we really can work on this like the attitude of uh, we all we uh, i don't think that in future we really have to uh, be on these workshop and address these uh, things and uh, and if i really can uh, touch upon like 26 participants we are there if i really can touch up on these lives and if we can uh, you know move a little bit so my uh, spending two hours here is like a word thank you each one of you yeah dr bhattacharya has shown the change of the mindset it is very much important and but i will say one with a one positive note that as the literacy education levels are going high people are changing their mindset today i mean in academic institutions in india also if not in all in a great institutions as dr ba mr bhagirath has said in iits people have held him isn't it that their friend has held him so mindset is changing isn't it it was not there when there was a less of education or people were not concerned technology also has connected us from people to people isn't it so i find that there will be a better future with the incorporation of technology with the enhancement of education we will be concerned about the uh, all those who are present in form of a living being be it a human being or be it a, a living animal souls so we make a call education is a great enabler this is the first and prerequisite you know for any science or any say, to be in a modern society enabling education i have an anecdotes i can't for because of time i made one my my cook she didn't know anything she can now read hindi she wants to learn english also i spent time with her every day half an hour and she is uh, thankful to me her her family is thankful to us so all of us if we can impart that was a scheme in school also bring one student you know uh, that you have to, uh, help in uh, learning so yeah. education has to be the first enabler thank you professor sir mm-hmm. yeah i want to thank all the participants who uh, were present throughout the session thank you once again i want to thank the organizers and avex for covering us and i want to thank jonathan also for being there and uh, i want to thank all the speakers who uh, who were here to help me out with the session so thank you all once again and uh, Uh, thank you angelita for appreciating us that it was great we do uh, look forward to the feedback and hope we can get some feedback from from the people and from the organizers thank you once again for joining us for this session on behalf of, on behalf of triple as thank you so much for for joining us and being part of the uh, the conference and we hope you enjoy the rest of it thanks uh, yeah. jana yeah. thanks uh, thank you jana and thank you venus dilu and all co-partners thank you so thank much sir <laughs> thank you so much we need to be thanked you know to bring us into it you know yeah so, so we learned many things see actually mm-hmm. i learned many things i didn't know like the scientist word has been coined for a lady you see mm-hmm. who her parents were denying her education now she is a uh, wrote a book on science you know and the person who call her sign he is himself in a forest in trinity college you know so this is i think we learned we live and learn <laughs> okay thank you all yeah thank you thank you <laughs>